physiologic factors affecting cerebral tissue oximetry. Maintaining the brain's balance between oxygen delivery and consumption is critical to promoting brain health. Foresight's NEARS technology uses a five-wavelength near-infrared spectroscopy, which can be used for both cerebral and somatic tissue oximetry. This animation will focus on cerebral tissue oximetry. The Foresight Cerebral Tissue Oximeter continuously monitors STO2 values, which reflect the brain's balance between oxygen delivery and consumption, and can update every two seconds. An imbalance can quickly be identified and mitigated by the clinician if STO2 monitoring is being used. The following animation will describe the different physiologic factors that affect this balance and how they can be addressed if an imbalance occurs. In real-life applications, STO2 may be affected by one or more physiologic factors. For teaching purposes, the following descriptions will focus on each factor independently. Cerebral oxygen delivery and consumption. Cerebral oxygen delivery is affected by cerebral blood flow, hemoglobin, and oxygenation. Cerebral blood flow is affected by PaCO2, MAP, and cardiac output. Cerebral metabolic rate, which is commonly referred to as CMRO2, indicates oxygen consumption of the brain and is affected by both temperature and anesthesia. Monitoring STO2 values can provide insight into potential imbalances between cerebral oxygen delivery and consumption. When STO2 monitoring is utilized in conjunction with traditional vital signs, advanced hemodynamic monitoring, and laboratory assessments, clinicians can identify the root cause of imbalances and determine appropriate interventions. PaCO2 Cerebral blood vessels dilate and constrict with changing PaCO2 levels. Lower levels of PaCO2 can cause cerebral vasoconstriction, impeding blood flow. Higher levels can cause vasodilatation, resulting in increased flow. Even small changes of 1 or 2 millimeters of mercury in PaCO2 caused by changes in minute ventilation can result in significant changes in vessel size affecting cerebral blood flow. PaCO2 can be continuously assessed with an end tidal CO2 monitor or intermittently with an arterial blood gas. These changes in cerebral blood flow can affect cerebral oxygen delivery which can then be detected and displayed on the hemosphere monitor as STO2. This vasoconstrictive effect can be reversed by decreasing the patient's minute ventilation to allow the PaCO2 to rise, resulting in vasodilation, which increases blood flow and oxygen delivery to the brain. A corresponding elevation in cerebral STO2 should be seen. Mean arterial pressure. Mean arterial pressure, or MAP, is another important component of cerebral blood flow. Changes in MAP can affect cerebral blood flow and therefore oxygen delivery to the brain. The STO2 value displayed on the hemosphere monitor may reflect these changes. Continuous monitoring of blood pressure with an arterial line Minimally invasive CO technology, such as FlowTrack or Acumen IQ sensors, or non-invasive technologies, such as a ClearSight sensor, can help the clinician assess changes in MAP and guide therapy. Reversing a hypotensive episode can increase blood flow and mitigate this desaturation event. Cardiac output. In addition to PaCO2 levels and MAP, cardiac output is an important component of cerebral blood flow and oxygen delivery to the brain. An imbalance of cerebral oxygen delivery and consumption caused by changes in cardiac output can be detected by Foresight's NEARS technology. When cardiac output is the cause of the imbalance, the ability to drill down to heart rate or stroke volume and then preload, afterload, and contractility is important. This allows clinicians to understand the root cause of this imbalance. Pairing STO2 monitoring with a non-invasive or minimally invasive cardiac output technology can be a powerful combination. 
Once you have identified the root cause, treatment can be selected and the effect may be mitigated. Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin levels affect the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood and can significantly impact cerebral oxygen delivery to the brain. STO2 can detect cerebral desaturation caused by lower levels of hemoglobin, resulting from blood loss or hemodilution. Transfusion of hemoglobin will increase oxygen carrying capacity as well as preload, which correspondingly increases cardiac output. The end result will be an increase in oxygen delivery to the brain and increasing STO2 values. Oxygenation. Blood oxygen levels can affect cerebral oxygen delivery to the brain and most frequently are affected by the lung's ability to ventilate or diffuse oxygen into the capillaries. The saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen in the arterial blood can continuously be assessed with a pulse oximeter, SpO2, or intermittently with an arterial blood gas, SAO2. Arterial oxygen desaturation events observed by a decreasing SpO2 or SAO2 value can eventually affect cerebral oxygen delivery and be reflected as a lower STO2 value. Usually, these desaturation events can be easily treated by increasing the percentage of oxygen delivered to the patient or by increasing PEEP. Cerebral Oxygen Consumption Cerebral metabolic rate of oxygen, or CMRO2, can increase with a patient's high metabolic state, such as an elevation of temperature, pain, or anxiety, and result in a decrease in the STO2 value. Treatment may include the use of antipyretics or direct cooling of the patient. Additionally, sedation or anesthesia can decrease pain or anxiety, resulting in a decreased consumption of oxygen. The Foresight System's NEARS technology allows for the continuous non-invasive assessment of the balance between cerebral oxygen delivery and consumption with actionable thresholds and STO2 values that update every two seconds. Combining traditional bedside monitoring parameters with Hemosphere's advanced hemodynamic monitoring capabilities can help clinicians identify and mitigate the root cause of an imbalance and be a part of improving a patient's brain health.